Uh, this is a question for Professor Prakash. As I understand it, you take the fixation thesis of originalism to apply not just to constitutions but to texts in general, and moreover, you take it that it's obviously, you know, the fixation thesis is obviously true. Uh, but I was wondering if that's actually a revision of our interpretive practice. I mean, many, you know, for example, if we're interpreting the Bible, often interpretive communities will, because they think the point of the Bible is not just to, you know, the point of the Bible is, say, to promote community, or the point of some re religious text is to, pr is to promote community. They will uh, attempt to interpret it in light of that point. Likewise, certain poems or certain pieces of literature, maybe the point they, for whatever reason, believe is to provoke thought, so they will interpret it in light of that point. So I was wondering if the fixation thesis has a more circumscribed scope and if it's a revision, a uh, fairly revisionist thesis for our interpretive practice. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know it was uh, for me. Um, oh. uh, but I did, I did, I think I understood the question, so uh, I won't ask you to repeat it. Okay. Um, it. It seems to me that if we think that, you know, I, I can't speak to Christian practices um, and interpretation of the Bible. I'm, I'm uh, dreadfully ignorant of them. Um, but uh, it seems to me that if you posit that the Bible or a poem uh, is meant, the, the meaning of it is meant to change over time, a la uh, the French code, then actually having it change over time is a consequence or it follows from the originalist fixation thesis, right? If, if, if some document says this document's meaning will change over time, uh, the fixation thesis suggests that that's the meaning, and then of course the meaning will change over time. I don't, uh, I I don't know if it necessarily needs to be the document itself that says that. You, the point of the document, I left that deliberately vague. I mean, how you decide what the point of a document is, you, you might have to investigate the broader historical context. It might actually you know, be relative to the community in which the document is being read as well. At least practice, you know, if you sort of survey the expanse of different interpretations that people have conducted over time, that seems to be the best descriptive theory of how interpretation works. I would think. Well, I, I would certainly agree with you that it doesn't need to be clear from the face of the document that that's the way the document was, quote, meant to be interpreted. It could still be the way it was meant to be interpreted, notwithstanding the fact that it's not on the face of the document. Good. Time for one more question over here. Um, my question is for uh, Professor Whittington. Um, earlier you mentioned that the, uh, what it means to be conservative has changed over time. For instance, you have Republican opposition to Wilson's Sedition Act during World War I. Whereas now with the Patriot Act under President Bush, you have almost total Republican support. So basically my question is how, what it means to be conservative, how that has changed over time, how that has affected how the Republican Party more specific or more broadly the conservative movement inside America has interpreted the Constitution. Um, yeah, so I mean, so as you suggest, the, the Republican Party, um, uh, it's, well, so, right, conservative movements, certainly different things at different moments. The Republican Party, right, as an organization, continues over time, but what the content of what the Republican Party is certainly looks uh, differently over time. I mean, as Professor Fallon mentioned, the modern um, theory of originalism is a fairly modern innovation. Um, you can basically date it from the 1970s and, and 1980s. It has some precursors um, that are earlier than that. Um, and so th the kind of argumentation that originalists uh, made um, earlier than that um, or and the Republican Party um, uh, made earlier than that um, has um, aspects of originalist arguments in it, um, but it also has other kinds of things uh, in it. And so one of the interesting features, I think, of the modern conservative movement um, is the extent to which originalism has become sort of the official doctrine of the uh, conservative uh, movement and the Republican Party more generally, um, almost to the exclusion of a lot of other uh, modes of constitutional argumentation and modes of constitutional theory, whereas if you look at uh, conservative argumentation about the Constitution um, at earlier points in American history, uh, you see a wider array of, of constitutional arguments and, and arguments about how the Constitution uh, might be interpreted, which are often sort of less self-conscious about how you go about doing it. Um, but you see sort of implicitly there are other kinds of notions about how to do it. Um, 
and that earlier uh, moments in time, originalism is prominent uh, among conservatives as it's prominent among liberals, but it's not the, not the only thing uh, uh, going, um, going on. Um, so there's movement um, among conservatives about how to uh, go about interpreting the Constitution as well as the substantive content about what they think the, the Constitution means um, across, um, uh, across uh, time. Um, you know, and some of that's a rethinking um, about uh, what the right content of the Constitution is. Some of it, though, as politics tends to be, um, it's a matter of, you know, what's working for us at the moment, what seems like it's going to be politically useful, uh, what fits with our uh, current uh, political program uh, at the moment. And so part of what I would sort of urge from a normative perspective um, for those who are thinking in terms of originalism in a modern perspective is um, that I think of it as a political theory um, and a set of commitments that are separable uh, from sort of what's the momentary thing that Fox News is pushing, um, right? And that that's, that's guided by a set of political calculations about what's going to win the next election or what's currently politically convenient or what seems like a good idea at the moment, um, whereas hopefully um, ideas about how the Constitution ought to be interpreted um, has sort of more fundamental um, uh, sets of commitments associated with them uh, than that. And, and they ought to be uh, more thought out than that, but also have uh, more enduring significance and, and commitments associated with them uh, than that. Well, I think that's going to have to be the last word for our panel. But, and <laughs> Thank you all very much. Thank you.